Hello there, today I'm going to show you the very, very basics of Fusion 360. Now, I'm by no means an expert in this, but I know enough. <laughs> um, I, I'm beyond the basics, I'm mediocre. My goal is to try and make this the least boring Fusion 360 tutorial. Um, mostly because all the other ones on the internet are boring as hell. So we're going to try and avoid that, we're going to try and make these as concise, quick, and easy to follow as possible. Once you open up your Fusion 360, you're going to see this. Um, there's not much here to look at, I mean it may seem like a lot, but you'll learn that it's not. So what we're going to do first is we're going to open up a drawing, I don't remember if it, okay it does by default. So we're going to open up a drawing, okay, so that's what this is called here, this is called drawing. So right now we have a blank slate. There's nothing on it. Um, so to create something uh, we would click sketch. And now we see we have these three options here. So this one, as we can see up here, this is the top. So this would be, if we click on this it will change our view to looking straight down. If we click on this it will change our view to looking like this to the right. And if we click on this, it'll change it to that right now. That's kind of arbitrary. You don't really need to know that. So let's just do a top-down view. It's really just personal preference. I do top-down. Now, if we want to move our camera, like you saw me do earlier, you hold Shift and Middle Mouse. That's how you, well, pivot your camera. To move your camera, you hold down your Middle Mouse button and drag, just as you do to pivot. But rather than holding Shift, you just drag. Um, to zoom you scroll in and out. So now that we've figured out how to move our camera around um, we can start drawing. So I'm just going to set us back to the top down view. You can click on top to do that. If you click on the side it'll do the 45 degree. Um, I don't know. If, yeah. <laughs> that That's yeah. So anyway to draw we have the sketch thing here. So we can by default do line or two point rectangle. Um, you can change what is on here. I just leave it as default. In our sketch tab here, we're going to click on that, obviously, and then we're going to scroll down to hover over rectangle. And I'm going to choose center point rectangle. You could choose two point rectangle, but I want this to be centered on the sketch. So what we're going to do is we're going to select center point rectangle, click on it, and then we're going to hover over this and we should see this little box here I don't know if you can see that but if when, when you see that box that means that it's clipping onto it um, like if we put it in between one of these we see we don't get that box but if we put it like on that dot there or on this line or on that intersection there it will it's gonna stay at that point that's where it's it's exactly on 25 Y on the y-axis. So let's just do it at the center for now. And let's say we want to make it 50. So we type 50. Uh, we can use our numpad or just normal numbers on the keyboard. And then we hit tab and we hit type 50 again. So now that's created these dimensions here. And say we forgot to do this um, before we or before we put this down. So let's just change the size a bit. If we want to change this after the fact, and we forgot to put the dimensions in when we were creating it, we can hit D on our keyboard, or we can hover over Sketch and go down towards the bottom and click on Sketch Dimension. So, I, ha I already had this selected, but what you would normally do... Okay, if I unselect it, what you would normally do is select your Sketch Dimension tool, and then click on the line, or if I wanted to measure the angle, I would click on... So I have this one selected now, and if I click on this, I can measure the angle, but as we can see, this will over-constrain the sketch, um, which we'll get into at a later time. Uh, but we can see that this is 90 degrees, right? So let's make this 50 by 50 again. Um, 50, and then do it again. It should already be 50. Uh, if we didn't want it to be 50, we, if we wanted it to be 50 by 60, we could easily do that. Um, however, that's not really that big of a deal. Um, so, 
to undo and redo, there are multiple ways to do it. So Control Z is undo, Control Y is redo. The other way to do it, which is probably more obvious if you don't have your keyboard shortcuts memorized, is to go up here and click the undo and redo buttons. If you want to go way back, it's probably it's okay. It's universally going to be easier to go up here and do that. Um, but I still prefer the keyboard shortcuts because I'm stubborn. So now that we have this, we can do a couple of things. Let's let's just say we want to add a line, and we'll just do it like sort of like that, right? So we're just going to add this polygon, <laughs> uh, parallelogram rather, sorry, <laughs> actually that would both work, but we're just going to add this shape, right? And let's say we want to make both of these taller, so we would hit E or go into the Create tab and click Extrude, it's also right here. So if we click on Extrude or hit E on our keyboards, we can select things that we want to extrude or make taller. So if you want to get our rough, like normally what I'll do if I don't know how high I want something, like if I'm designing a part for, you know, that that doesn't matter the size, um, I'll just kind of use this to get it somewhere that I like and then round it to a nice number. So we can see that this is going in increments of five. Now, you can change it to whatever you want. I could change it to 51.2035 and it would do that. Like if we go in here, it's that tall exactly. So you can you can go out for the most part as long as you want. Like it will it will measure that out. You won't be able to notice that or realistically get it to that point, but you can do that. So, let's say that we only wanted to do this one. The rec or the square. Well, I guess it's a rectangular prism. Now let's make it 50 tall. So we're going to go over here or here, highlight it, place it with 50. So now we have a cube. But say we wanted to extrude this part over here a little further and we, or we just forgot to select it. The way we could do that is we could if we forgot to select it, double click down here and that will modify or reopen your extrude and we can just select it. But we don't want to do that right now, so we're going to unselect that and we're going to go over to here. And we're going to click the drop down arrow under sketches and we're going to click the light bulb. That will make the sketch visible again because if we hit extrude right now, it won't show up, but if we turn the sketch back on it will, so click on that, and now we could make it 85 tall. Maybe we just want it to be 40 tall. How about that? Then we can click OK, and you'll notice that the sketch is still there, so if it's getting on your nerves or really anything else, we can just get rid of it. And there, it's still there, but we can't see it anymore. So that's a that's pretty much it for the very basics of Fusion 360. Using these tools you can do quite a lot. Now obviously you're not going to be able to achieve everything you could ever want using this, but if you know the tools I showed you in this tutorial, you're going to get pretty far into Fusion 360. Um, so one last thing, if we want to save our sketch we're going to hit Control S or think we can go up here and click save. So now we can put it in, we can give it a name, tutorial1. Now if we want to create a, so Fusion 360 uses folders, I guess that's what you could describe them as for your projects. So if we click up here, these nine dots, squares, I guess, yeah, squares, um, and we see over here, we have all of my bloody projects. I'm working on a tank. Um, but if we click New Project, this will create a new folder, uh, which is exactly the same thing that it's doing if we hit Control S, Tutorial 1, and if we hit New Project here. Um, new Folder, so if we wanted to create a new folder, actually, we'll do that here. So let's create a new project right, um, tutorial, 
hit enter. It's gonna. This is a cloud-based thing, so it's gonna upload to the cloud. It's gonna take it a second. So let's select that. Then, if we wanted to create a new folder, so let's say episode one. Hit enter, and then that will create the folder. So now, if we double-click into there, we can see the location is tutorial episode one. So now, if we click save right here going to save it to that exact spot. So now if we go into tutorial, double click, then the folder, episode 1, then we have our treads. So that's pretty easy, right? Now say we don't want this to be sorted by alphabetical order, or we have a project that we're currently working on that we want to be closer to the top or on the top, we can hover over what we're looking for and click this button that says pin. Then, if we scroll back up, we can see that your pin things are at the very top and are once again sorted alphabetically, but they're at the very top. So, using, using the tools here, as I've already said, you can get pretty far, and I hope you do. Um, however, I will be having more tutorials, or I will be making more tutorials in the coming days, and I hope that they help you. So, consider subscribing if you're ready to see more. Um, if you liked this video or it helped you, consider liking the video. If you didn't like it, dislike the video. Uh, if you have any suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Um, all suggestions are greatly appreciated. Um, I do tend to have a struggle coming up with comment or video ideas. So, thank you for watching this video. I will see you all next time. Goodbye.